grew up with my mum um, and my old, older brother Simon. Um, yeah, and it was it was pretty much us two, and uh, also my gran um, used to live um, opposite, uh, and then moved across and lived in the same house as us. Um, so so yeah, it was it was the three of us mainly. Um, my dad um, didn't live with us; he lived in Sudbury. I didn't have that much contact uh, with my dad um, sort of growing up. So it was mainly my mum took care of us. My older brother, um, you know, I think I was the, the, the pain in the backside little sister that loved to follow him around. Um, you know, I, I always wanted to do what my brother, my brother did. So, he, you know, he played football, he played cricket, he, he, he ran for an athletics club, and I always wanted to follow and, and do exactly the same. I went to Mallory's uh, primary school um, and, and uh, Hampstead secondary school. Um, school for me was, was something that I, I enjoyed going there, meeting up with my friends, you know, break times, uh, football times, PE lessons. But uh, for me, I, I wasn't an academic kid. I, I really struggled um, in school. In primary school, I kind of always knew that I had a problem with sort of reading and writing, but tried to, uh, you know, disguise it and, and figure out because you don't want other kids to know that, you know, you're struggling in one part. So. I kind of, um, yeah, I, my mum always sort of thought that there, there was a problem with me, um, but I'd get learning help with, the, uh, with reading and writing, and she'd always say, oh, someone needs to, someone needs to help her. Um, I'd go to the teacher, but I'd always pick up the same book, so I, I just managed to remember the book uh, and recite it back to them. And they'd of course say to my mum, no, there was no problem. So my mum was like just baffled at the fact that, you know, when I'd read books at home, I would really struggle, but at school I'd be fine. Um, so when I got to secondary school, it was only before my, um, before my GCSEs that I was diagnosed with um, dyslexia. Um, so I I'd managed to pretty much go through my whole school, school life sort of, you know, blagging the system and getting away with it. Um, which probably wasn't a very clever thing to do when I look back now, but you know, when you're in school, you, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be sort of the one that's left out or called stupid or anything like that. I was probably about eight years old. Um, used to go down the park um, with with Michael and Lawrence, and, and they joined a football team. Um, one of the one of the parents from from their school. Uh, you know, started off a team and they, they asked me if I wanted to join, not realising that, um, you know, girls weren't meant to play in the same team as boys, um, you know, so I went down there, I, I trained, um, we suddenly realised that there was no other girl, so, um, yeah, disguised myself and, and called myself Ray, um, went to the to barber shop with, with Lawrence and, and cut all my hair off. Um, to the disgust of my mum when I, when I walked back home. Um, he was totally shocked um, that I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd had a, I don't know, prayed one or two on my head. Um, I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think, you know, for me it was, it was just about trying to, you know, if football was what I loved and, and if it meant that I had to pretend to be Ray to play football, then, then that was simple. I, I was going to do that. We played in a, um, it was a Brent five-a-side league. We used to play at uh, Kingsbury School. I can't remember what night it was, but a weekday night. Um, Tony Chelsea used to drive us all up there in his van, um, you know, and take us all back. And you know, fantastic he was. Um, but yeah, we got to a cup final, and um, and uh, one of the kids on the other team uh, went to my school, so he, he knew I was he knew I was a girl. Um, I'm, I'm, my birthday's in November as well, so I'm one of the oldest in the class. So I can't remember if I'm, I may have been, uh, you know, a month or two, too old to play in that league as well. So um, unfortunately, he told the uh, he told the uh, the referee. Um, so we started off, we were playing really well, um, and then the referee asked me if I was a girl, um, and he told me I had to leave the pitch. He told me I wasn't allowed to play. That was really the change for me because. Um, at that point, you know, I, I couldn't be Ray anymore. Um, I wasn't allowed to play for the boys' team, um, and and you know, Tony Chelsea was fantastic because he, he went to the the AGM uh, for the league, and it just so happened that there was um, girls' teams in this league as well, and um, 
yeah, he, he said that his best player has been a girl for, for you know the past season. And you know, if there's any women's teams out there that had, you know take a girl that wants to play football, um, then he, he'd do his best to get me into the team. There was loads of teams from sort of I don't know Arsenal, Barnet, um, Wembley, uh, loads of different sort of women's teams, um, Watford at, at, at the, at the uh, that played in the same league, but uh, Mill Hill United. Uh, were the first team to, to put their hand up and said that they ran a girls team and uh, yeah they, they spoke to Tony and, and Tony arranged the, someone to pick me up and take me to Mill Hill um, and, and that's how I, I, I got into women's football and, um, and that's how I played for Mill Hill United. I was found by Arsenal actually playing for, um, for my school team um, the school team were absolutely horrendous. Um, there was probably myself and one other girl that liked football and then just made up with a team of, of, of girls that sort of either wanted to get out of class or, or you know, were just happy to, to go on a school trip. Um, we didn't play that many games um, and I used to hate playing for the girls team just because they'd give me the football um, and they just all stop and watch me and expect me to do something fantastic with it. And I'd always sort of grown up, you know, down the park, playing sort of passing game and you know, being a team and always wanted to set somebody else up and, and stuff like that. So, so the fact that someone would give me the ball and expect me to do everything and score goal after goal after goal, I didn't like it. I felt like there was, um, you know, not too much pressure, but just too too many eyes on me. Everyone was watching, and everyone sort of, you know, was was making a big deal out of it. And I I didn't really want people to to make a big deal out of me. I just wanted to to be part of the team and, and you know have the team win. Um, so I, it wasn't it wasn't an enjoyable time for me playing for for the girls team. But the um, Vic Akers, who, who obviously was the manager of Arsenal Ladies, was the refer referee at the um, at the Camden League game, so um, he'd asked me uh, the first time uh, if I played football and who I played for, and I told him uh, very proudly that I played for Mill Hill. Um, uh, and he, he, you know, he ever said if I, if I, you know, was to move, you know, I should take a trial with Arsenal and, and see how it goes. But but Mill Hill was my team, and I, I said that I didn't want to do that. And then. You know, I remember uh, being in the league again, having another game down there, and whether he'd forgot and didn't know who I was or whether he was asking me for a second time, but he asked me the same sort of question. Um, and at that time, I sort of knew a little bit more who he was, um, you know, obviously being an Arsenal fan and thought, you know, you don't get, you know, two opportunities to be asked to play for Arsenal Football Club. And yeah, after that, um, I think I'd made the decision that I wanted to to try out for them and, and, and see how it go, how it went. I left Mill Hill when I was 16 to go to Arsenal. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it was a big move um, and a challenge for me. Um, you know, when I first moved to Arsenal, I was told um, by one of the coaches there that uh, I'd probably go into the third team. Um, uh, Mill Hill at that point were sort of encouraging me to try and stay at Mill Hill were tipping me as a future captain of the side but you know deep down I knew that I had to challenge myself and I knew that I had to you know take the opportunity to go to Arsenal if I was to fail I was to fail but um, you know you've got to take the risk and I wanted to take that chance um, I went there I, I didn't play for the third team I played for the reserves a couple of times and, and made the first team bench for, for most of the season and um, in my first season we played Everton away and there happened to be an England scout there and watched me, thought I was good enough and um, you know I went to an England camp so uh, I think I, my first England camp was uh, just after my 17th birthday so which was yeah pretty cool. I think it, it became a career when, when I was offered a, well, offered a professional contract at Fulham um, although I played for Arsenal for probably you know, six seasons um, before that. Um, you know, at the, at the beginning at Arsenal, we paid subs, we paid, um, you know, contributions to, to the hotel fees uh, when we stayed away. So for me, it wasn't really, football wasn't bringing in money, football wasn't, you know, a job. I wouldn't have called it a profession. It was, it was more my hobby, it was, it was something I loved. 
but then to be offered um, a professional contract by Fulham, um, you know, it, it meant leaving Arsenal, which I didn't want to do. Um, you know, which was probably the hardest phone call I've had to make, ringing up Vic Akers and, and telling him that, uh, that you know, I, I was going to sign for Fulham and that I wasn't going to return to Arsenal. Um, but, you know, it was, it was something that deep down I, I knew I had to do and I was going to become a professional footballer. I was, you know, going to train every day with the team, with a football, you know, do fitness, do ball work, have coaches there that could you know, helped me um, to develop my game and, you know, it, it was something that I thought, this is amazing, I, I can't possibly turn this down. The women's side haven't had the best of summers. Yankee on the chase again! It wasn't a dream of mine, it wasn't something that I ever thought that I would do or thought that I would achieve. Um, you know, I was just, you know, the kid from Queen's Park, a uh, little girl, pretended to be a boy, wanted to play football just because I love football. There was no, um, there was no, oh, I want to be a footballer when I'm older. I couldn't have told you. I'd probably have said that I wanted to be a vet or, or a fireman or, you know, a firewoman, should I say, um, or an astronaut or something like that. I, I just didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. Um, and I didn't ever believe I could be a football player because there were no female football role models out there for me to look up to and say, I want to do that and I can earn money and that can be my job and, and that can be my dream. I just played it because I loved the sport. I found it enjoyable. I found it something that I was good at. And, you know, people praised me when I did it. So, um, you know, that's the reason that I got involved in football. So, you know, to sit here, you know, having played for you know, my favourite team, Arsenal, having played, you know, won so many FA Cup and League Cups and, and you know, medals and trophies with Arsenal and, and you know, having 125 caps for England, um, I'm a bit, I'm a bit astonished by <laughs> Officially, this was just a friendly match, but as soon as Kevin Prince Boateng has passed the ball, the animal chance start. The commentator searches for words, the referee tries for calm, but the Ghanaian walks off. The first professional footballer to do such a thing. Incredible. Incredible. Um, I think, you know, obviously the work that Kick It Out do is massive, you know, for, for the football game. Discrimination, you know, shouldn't be in the game. It shouldn't be in the, in the world, really, um, you know, in our communities. And I think it's, it's about, you know, sending the message across, educating people. Some people do things that perhaps others don't agree with because they don't know, they're not educated. So I think the work that, that Kick It Out do in educating people and getting the messages across and using obviously footballers and role models um, to educate youngsters is, uh, is impressive and invaluable. I would like to be remembered um, just, just, just for being, you know, for being me, for, for being an honest football player. That, that went out and, and you know tried my hardest to win every game and, and enjoyed playing football. Um, you know that, that, that's just me. Um, I don't think there's there's anything else I'd, I'd like to be remembered for. Someone you know went out, was exciting, played football in the right sort of spirit and, and, and was honest.